Like all Bethesda games, Skyrim is filled to the brim with strange and mysterious secrets. I mean, quite literally, there are thousands of things to do and discover throughout this massive game. And unfortunately, since Skyrim is now older than the average gamer, I'm pretty sure most of you have already seen everything that there is to see in Tamriel. But what if I told you that there's still more to see beneath the surface of Skyrim? Things that you were never meant to see. Number 1. AAA Delete When Done Test Jeremy As the name suggests, it sounds like Jeremy has some answering to do, as this cell was likely meant to be long deleted by the time the game was shipped, but its inclusion was forgotten and remains in the final product to this day. This cell contains two NPCs, Test Jeremy Small and Test Jeremy Big. Although both of these NPCs are naked and do nothing but smell tours in this tiny room all day, they do have an interesting move up their sleeve once they finish with their smelting animation. One of them becomes bigger, and the other becomes smaller. And that's pretty much all this has to offer. This room was likely made to test being able to change the sizes of models in real time, which may have been a concept for a spell or staff sometime early into development. But rumor has it that these two guys are the ones responsible for powering the game's engine, which perfectly explains why Skyrim is such a buggy mess all the time. Number 2. I know that we've seen some strange anomalies in the previous entries, but this entry takes the prize for weirdness. DLC 2 Reichling Furniture is a test cell that contains a group of Reichlings that are all playing out unique animations. One of them is hitting a chisel with a hammer, another is dancing, and there's even one that's sitting atop a large throne. Well, large for a Reichling anyway. Aside from these goblins, there are two naked Nords. One of them is simply holding a large boulder and walks around with it, while the other falls from the ceiling to his death. Strange, I know. It's unknown what the purpose of this test cell is, but we can assume that it was made to test out various unique Reichling animations, as well as an animation for humanoid characters carrying boulders. However, I really don't have an explanation for the gentleman falling from the ceiling. I guess that's Bethesda's idea of an inside joke or something. Number 3. Bleak Falls Barrow is by no means an area you weren't meant to see. Hell, Bethesda put several quests in the dungeon so you'd be forced to go there at some point. However, you may not have been aware that there are two versions of Bleak Falls Barrow in the game. During the gameplay demo shown at QuakeCon, Bethesda used an alternate version of Bleak Falls Barrow to showcase their game. This version is 99% identical to the final version of the dungeon, however there are some key changes made. Firstly, enemies have a much higher level, with better loot to suit. Some areas of the dungeon, such as the stone puzzle, were removed entirely, and the two bosses, the giant frostbite spider and the drog or death lord, are completely absent from the game. Most interestingly though is how the entire dungeon is no longer separated into two zones, and is instead one large cell. This was likely changed after Bethesda began adding things like puzzles and dialogue into the dungeon, and found that having such a large area was causing too many problems, so they split it off. Nevertheless, by typing E3 Demo Bleak Falls Barrow into your console, you too can have a look at this old version of the iconic dungeon. Number 4. Even though many of these entries are pretty obscure, I'm pretty sure you've already heard the story of the Windhelm Pit. This location is one of the most fleshed out pieces of cut content in the game, with a fully designed cell with unique models and NPCs. Much like what we saw with Oblivion, fans speculated that the Windhelm Pit was likely going to be a gladiatorial arena, where the Dragonborn would have to fight enemies that would gradually become more difficult until they become the champion of the arena. However, some cut dialogue suggests that the arena would have also been a unique way of serving your time in Windhelm's jail, where you would have to fight to the death with another inmate. With that knowledge, it does make sense why Bethesda decided to cut this location from the game. After all, it probably isn't the smartest decision to free a prisoner because he killed someone else in cold blood. Luckily, modders came to the rescue and finished this part of the game for Bethesda, a habit which is becoming all too common with their games. So, even if you're upset with Bethesda's decision, you can still enjoy this piece of cut content. Number 5. Although Skaldafen is neither hidden nor inaccessible, the area surrounding it is. But by using console commands, players can escape Skaldafen's playable area. Doing so leads them to a vast ocean that's as thin as a puddle, which may have been created as a metaphor for Skyrim, but more probably, 
created for testing purposes. This ocean infinitely generates and is home to all sorts of anomalies, from sunken cities to large mountainous summits of water, and even dragons that will randomly attack you, Skaldafen has it all. Since this world space is infinitely generated, modders also took a page out of Bethesda's book and also used this vast ocean as a place to test their mods, so you might see even more anomalies, depending on what mods you have installed. Another interesting fact about this place is that because the landscape is infinite, you can just keep going and going. However, much like how Minecraft's infinitely generating world begins to collapse onto itself once the game begins to run out of memory, players will begin to see their Dragonborn slowly get warped and mangled out of shape, until the game eventually completely runs out of memory and just crashes. Number 6. I'm sure you're already familiar with the Mind of Madness quest, where you find yourself inside the mind of Pelagius the Mad, the former emperor of Skyrim. But what many players are unaware of is that this setting was likely made somewhat late into development, as remnants of the previous setting remain within the game's console commands. Old Blue Palace Wing 01 is all that remains of the old dungeon where this quest was to take place. As you can probably guess by its name, this area would have been set in the Old Blue Palace, which was destroyed by flames come the time Skyrim takes place. However, since this area contains a fully equipped kitchen and a working fireplace, the Dragonborn would likely have somehow gone back to a time when the Old Blue Palace was yet to be scorched in flames, either by entering a vision of some sort or by old-fashioned time travel. But things only get more interesting when we delve further into this wing of the palace. Past the kitchen is an outdoor area with a sky that's darker than the black soul gems fueling my staff. But going past this stretch of land leads to another castle, which although has no princesses in pink dresses, it does house a unique card game where players have to match two cards with one another. Interestingly, this card game was never to be seen in the base game, and instead remains in this castle forgotten. Number 7. The Mind of a Madman The madman in question being Pelagius III certainly exists and is accessible in-game. However, there is a series of areas connected to it, the entrance to which still technically exists but is placed behind an impassable barrier and thus inaccessible to players. But we've played Tears of the Kingdom and we're going to ascend right through the thing. This leads to a very strangely designed off-scale house that sits on a gigantic table, which in turn leads to an even more puzzling area, a Nordic tomb that leads to a half-exploded house, with bits of architecture spread about and floating in mid-air. Well, if such a site were to take place anywhere in Skyrim, it would be in the realm of Sheogorath. Number 8. Warehouse Crafting is a large box-shaped room that houses every crafting ingredient, as well as every crafting workbench, including a forge, grindstone, tanning rack, alchemy table, and all the others that you're familiar with. The center of the room has four bookcases that shelve every type of ingot and soul gem in the game. This room was very likely used by Bethesda as a fast way to test out the various crafting mechanics in the game, and rooms with plenty of items as we see in crafting warehouse are very common in video games as this, along with rooms like it, probably save lots of time compared to simply spawning in each crafting item every time somebody wanted to test something. What use does it have for us players? Well, other than getting a dopamine hit from how neatly organized the shelves are, not much. Still, it's always interesting to see how developers utilize the world space to make their workflow easier. Number 9. Throughout your playtime in Skyrim, you've likely murdered and killed enough people for a dictator to feel guilty about. But have you ever stopped to wonder where all the poor NPCs you've laid to rest go after you've taken their lives? The dead body cleanup cell is a bizarre purple and green lit hallway where the majority of the named PCCs you kill go after they've been killed. If you ever decide to visit this cell utilizing console commands and happen to find it very well populated, you may want to sit down and have some quality time with your conscience. This room was likely made as a remedy for a particular bug back in Oblivion, where if an essential NPC was killed after such a label was removed from them, their bodies would never disappear and would remain wherever you killed them for the rest of your playthrough. So, this cell is believed to have been made to solve this problem by teleporting the bodies to some place that the player can't access. And it's pretty funny that even the developers couldn't find a solution to this issue, and instead went for the out-of-sight, out-of-mind approach. 
Either way, it works, and we got a cool location to visit out of it. Subscribe to Fall Damage, you milk drinker.